Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm uh, very pleased and very honored to talk to you about uh, this new museum in Antwerp, the Maas, the Museum on the River, the Museum on the Stroom, as we call it in, uh, in Flemish. The museum is situated on the right bank side uh, of the river Skelt, and uh, you see it would uh, disappear in the skyline of Hong Kong, but it works and it fits in the skyline of Antwerp, and especially thanks to its uh, very nice red color. This is um, how it appears now to the audience when you come in the new um, area of the former harbor area and you arrive there, you will see this uh, magnificent building which uh, is designed by Neutelings uh, Riedijk architects from uh, Rotterdam, from uh, Holland. And um, what's uh, extremely striking is the, uh, the red color the red tiles, uh, carved stones coming from Rajasthan, from the northern of India, in combination with uh, the glass uh, windows for the first time worldwide. Uh, it was executed uh, in that way. Huge uh, curved uh, glass panels, and they came uh, from Italy. The question we had to ask uh, several years ago is, um, well, let's create, let's make uh, a new building, let's make a new museum. But the main question was, why should we create a new museum? Why should we create a new building? And uh, the fascinating thing about Antwerp is that uh, it's a very cultural city. It has an enormous amount of uh, museums, about more than uh, 70 museums, maybe too much of it, I think, but 70 museums in this uh, very small town. And um, the problem with the old museums was that they are all housed in uh, very old buildings, which is fascinating, but which is... Uh, very bad uh, for conditions towards the audiences, uh, a number of crowds uh, visiting these old buildings, and especially towards the, uh, the collections, because uh, all these old buildings, as you can see them here, where the former collections, which are now housed and based in the, uh, in the, in the Museum on the Strom, they were, before that, they were based in these uh, old uh, locations. And uh, the conditions were very poor. There was not climate control. Uh, when the group came in, there was... Uh, uh, there was uh, too much people in the entrance hall and there were a lot of uh, uh, annoying situations uh, uh, um, that you could see and experience when you were visiting these, uh, these old buildings. And um, so we decided to create a new museum and to combine all these uh, collections in that new building. And the very funny thing about it is that we didn't decide to build a new concept, to build a new building, but to use an old building. And we invited Belgian architects Xavier de Geiter, and Xavier de Geiter came up with the idea, well, we use this old building, but in front of the old building we have a, a modern construction. And all the things that have to do with uh, reception hall, visiting people, buying the tickets, that will happen in this, oh, I have to go back, that will happen in this building. And the striking thing about the idea of Xavier de Geiter was, um, well, let's make a combination between the old building and the modern construction, and make a connection with an elevator. And this elevator will go directly from the modern construction, go directly into the heart of the old construction. And then, after presenting his uh, ID, Xavier de Gaeta was uh, given the answer, no pasaran, which is Spanish for no way. No idea about doing this to this old, iconic 15th century building. And this gives us the opportunity not to use an old building, but to come up with a new building. And to find a new location to fit this new building in the whole area of uh, Antwerp. And this is Antwerp. It's, uh, as you can see, this is the town here. And it has a huge port. Um, even Antwerp citizens do not realize it, uh, but it has a fourth world port worldwide. So in fact, it's a very small village but it has a huge world port. And here, in the axis where the river, Skeld, meets the port and meets the city, it's on that spot that we will fit this new museum. Right here. The docks here, excavated under Napoleon. For Antwerp, Napoleon was a liberator because he started with regaining the economics. And he started with excavating new docks and give, gave to the city a new economic impulse. And the idea was to build the museum right here. 
as always in Belgium and as always in Antwerp, we were very ambitious. So a new museum needs uh, an international uh, competition and we invited about 160 architects worldwide to come up with a new concept, to come up with a good idea how they should see the new building, how they should see the uh, new construction. And among them, we came up with 160. We ended up with uh, a list of five, the short list, the famous short list of the new museum. And uh, you see here some examples of uh, Chumi, Tado Ando, again, Xavier de Geiter, despite what he did with the old building, and Ethos from, um, from Paris. And then this one was the winner of the international competition, Neutelings Riedijk. I know he's Dutch, but he stayed already, he lived already for 20 years in Antwerp, so in a way, he's Antwerp citizen, isn't he? Yes, he is. Neutelings Riedijk started with the idea to make a shape, to make a construction, and he was uh, shaping a form of new building. And these are some examples of how he made small models and how we came up to the idea to create what, uh, what we call then the story tower of the new museum on the river. And this is the result presented to Marquette, the, winning, the winner result, 2001. This will become the new museum, the story tower of Neutelings Riedijk Architects. And this is how it looks now. And, um, and first, the first idea was we have two targets. The first target, the new construction would become iconical, would add an icon to the skyline of Antwerp, an iconical building to the city of Antwerp. And the second target was to, in this building, improve the conditions for collections and for audiences. And in a sudden, by choosing this area to build the new museum, 10 years before, this area was completely uninteresting. Everybody has left this area. Nobody went to there. There was nothing to see. In fact, it was the largest parking lot of Antwerp. Free parking, free of charge. So full of cars and nothing happened. And then in a sudden, we decided to put 55 million euros in a cultural infrastructure because that's the price of the building. And in a sudden, you see by putting the first brick in 2006 that everybody was uh, involved in making city development, in making plans with we winning, regaining actually this uh, forgotten area, so-called Erlandscher area in Antwerp. It's, uh, to be honest, uh, to be frankly, it's an easy thing to think about a new museum, to come up with a new concept. Then the most difficult thing was to Go, I had to go as a new director, I had to go to the former directors of the former collections, and I had to invite them to think about a new concept of new museum. This is something, in terms of change management, change management, it can count. So they had to forget their old museum, and we would make a new museum, and a new museum deserves a new concept. The thing I didn't want to do is to drag the maritime collection to the third, first floor, the folklore uh, collections to the second floor and that kind of thing. So we intertwined the old collections and this was a mission we created with the people from the different museums with a new team. We spent two years about writing these few sentences. But this was a mission. And once the mission was accomplished, then we could continue by uh, creating and developing the new content of the museum. One year before the opening of the museum, we um, believed it, um, it was very nice and it could, be, it could have been very attractive to invite people to visit a museum which is empty. The building was finished. You could walk into the building all along up to the rooftop, 65 meters high, but there's nothing to see in the galleries because then we had to move all the objects into the galleries. So we gave 45,000 citizens of Antwerp, we gave them this opportunity to visit an empty museum. And we experienced that they were walking in the building for at least one hour and a half. And we were anxious because then they didn't see anything about the exhibitions. What will happen when we have the collections over there? So this is Vooruit Maas. It means forward Maas. One year to go and then we will open and we will present a new museum to the audiences. We have some... Um, quite famous artists living in Antwerp. And um, we asked them to come up with good ideas. For example, 
there's a huge square in front of the museum, and Luc Timons, who did exhibitions in the MoMA in the, in the Tate Modern, he, um, I asked him, have you time free? Uh, are you able, are you interested in thinking about a new concept, doing something with this large canvas, which is in front of the museum, 40 meters by 40 meters. And you know that uh, Luc Timons is a traditional painter, and in his eyes, the painter of the Antwerp Painter School was founded by Quinton Matthijs in the 15th century. He made a painting, this one, which is now in the National Gallery of Washington, and it's uh, this painting that has been reduced in a computer form in uh, more than thousands of different kinds of tiles, but reduced in seven colors in gray tones. And this is the largest timons in the world you can find so far. The next one is coming up in Abu Dhabi, but now we, are the large, we have the largest timons in front of our museum. And this is uh, the timons uh, square. The architect of uh, Nuttering Swedex is uh, not an architect, a kind of an architect where you have uh, straightforward things and coolness and that kind of things and much steel and glass. But, um, and I, I always mocking with uh, Nuttering Swedex. I, I uh, consider him, I, sell, I tell him, well, Willem Jan, you are a, a, a Baroque architect. You love interventions in ornaments. And this is what he did. At the precise moment, he came up to me and he said, well, we have 3,000 holes left in the whole building, on the floor, on the ceilings, against the walls, in the walking boulevard, in the open spaces where people can have free access to. And these 3,000 holes we had to fill with an ID. And we uh, came to other artists. Uh, um, Tom uh, Houtekiet, a graphic designer, and Tom Lanois, the first city poet in Antwerp. We have a city poet in Antwerp who writes poets for the city, about the city. And we combined these two artists, a graphic designer and, a, and an author, a city poet, and they came up with, uh, with this roundel. You can find 3,000 of these roundels all, the way, all over in the museum. By the way, it's not only in metal, but it's also available in a speciality which is uh, recognized in Belgium, in chocolate. We have, uh, against the facade of uh, the whole, all the way around the building of the mass, we have 3,000 metal hands. And the hands is a very symbolic thing about Antwerp. It refers to the legend of Antwerp. So the hands is a symbol of the city. On the other hand, it's also a kind of an ornament, all the way, a kind of a voile, all the way around the building. 3,000 metal hands. And this has become the part of what we call crowdfunding. We invited 3,000 people, small companies, but also a man who bought, who sponsored a hand for his deceased wife, or a brother and the other brothers, yeah, four brothers and one is residing in Antwerp and the three other brothers are residing worldwide. But every year they come back to Antwerp and unite. And as a symbol for the way they unite, they sponsor one hand. This is what is left of the unity in Antwerp. And we have 3,000 of these kind of hands sponsored by different kind of people. And we call them the hand members, the hand club. We invited Anne van Kerkhoven. You have to be aware of the fact that uh, when you have a walk into the walking boulevard, and you go all the way up in the museum to, to the rooftop, we have that kind of um, interventions, artist interventions by Anne van Kerkhoven, the way she created it, the way she thought about it, uh, the Making Of was an exhibition that was presented in the Art Institute uh, in uh, Chicago. And this is what you see here. And it acts, in a way, as a light tower from the tower inside, outside, to the uh, environment. And then we opened one year before, and people had a walk in the building. And there was nothing to see, only the views, sometimes towards the river, towards the city, and towards the port. And in a sudden, these three elements, which in a way symbolizes Antwerp, they were united by this museum because it acted as a bridge, a physical and a mental bridge. And in a sudden, you realized that you needed that kind of architecture, that intervention, to make this aware to all the visitors. Up to the rooftop. And as you can see, it's always 
Nice weather in Antwerp. And you have the panorama, 360 degrees all around. And maybe it sounds amazing for you being in Hong Kong, but uh, in fact in Antwerp, this is the only tower in Antwerp we have, the only tower we have in Antwerp where you have free access, uh, uh, availability to enter at 9.30 in the morning and go up till midnight. These are the opening towers. It's the only tower we have in Antwerp with free access. And that makes it so exciting. When there's a sunset, it's the most romantic place you can find in Antwerp. It's in the Maas, in the Spiral Boulevard. We have a square, we have a tower, and we have four pavilions. And we invited uh, the founders of the museum, who spent one million euros in financing this new project, we invited them to come up and fill one of the pavilions, pavilions which are next, standing next to the museum. And they came up with uh, very good ideas and um, we completed these pavilions in a way that the stories we bring there are complementary to the stories we bring in the museum. So we have more mass and we had more money to create the mass. This is about uh, the diamond industry. Antwerp is a very famous uh, world recognized center for the diamond industry. This has been designed by Crepin van Binst. Another one, we combined Ubicor, world leader in refining precious materials with a silver museum. And they bring here, again in a design for, for Crepin van Binst, they bring a story about uh, old 1670s silver in combination with modern design silver. The port of Antwerp, on one level, we bring a story about the history of the port of Antwerp from the early beginnings till now, but the port in real time, you can find out in this pavilion sponsored by the port of Antwerp. So you go into this pavilion and you can see what kind of ships, where they come from, what kind of goods they bring in Antwerp, where they leave their goods, and which goods they pick up and bring all the way to the other places all over the world. Antwerp related to the world and the world coming into Antwerp. This is where the museum is going about. This is what this pavilion also is uh, telling you about. This is the mass shop. And this is uh, very briefly the different storages you have and the different museum boxes. I don't know whether you are aware of the fact that the museum people are very traditional people, very conservative. And for example, there's a department, the conservation department, and the conservation department conserves our heritage. That's the reason why they, they, they put a lot of these things in the closed depot. And the ideal museum for the conservation department is a museum which is not accessible for the audience, which is closed for the public. And then in a sudden, the director comes up and he wants an open depot, a viewing depot. With the whole museum, we would like to make a difference. This is a museum, true, on the basis, but in the way we deal with other elements, we try to become more than only a museum. And the Open Depot is a chance to let people in and experience all the things they didn't experience before. Therefore, you have to go into the Open Depot, and you go in it. Before that, five years ago, the Conservation Department told me, Mr. De Bau, we do know that. It's completely uninteresting, and it's dangerous. Well, so far, so good, so it's not dangerous. And we had a public survey, and we asked our visitors, what did you like the most? And 97% of our visitors said, the open depot. So they were not right in that judgment, the conservation department. We bring exhibitions on the third floor, every time, every changing exhibitions. And this exhibition was on show in Shanghai, the story of the image. And it combines, this is something we love to do, combine old masters, Rubens combining with Jan Fabre with Panamarenko. We are all dealing with the same issues, we are all dealing with the same questions, but giving different answers. This is what you see in this uh, exhibition. We are the first museum worldwide that has appointed a house composer, a music composer, Erik Schleichem from Blindman Quartet. And we invited him to make compositions. He names these compositions uh, sort of sensorial spaces. If you go into the museum, it's not only looking at things, you can also feel things, you can smell things. We have a smell artist. 
and you can hear things. And this is the kind of way that we try to give the visitor an experience that going to a museum is not only looking at things, but it's a complete, it's a total experience. And a house composer is helping in that and gives more three-dimensionality in the experience of a museum visitor. The scenographers, or you could call them the interior designers, but they are not only designing. We want interior designers be architects from Antwerp. We want them to have accomplished them in the creation and thinking of how to display the objects. And my desire was very simple towards the interior designers. I asked them to put more of an opera and to put more of theater in the museum. And this is what happened. A shock in the beginning because the conservators who are focused on the objects would believe that when people come in, they don't see any more about the objects. They only look at the theater. But in a way, it's combining these elements, and now it works perfectly together. This is about the port of Antwerp. Such a difference in experience when you go to a maritime museum and you see all the ship models behind glass. On the one hand, in the mass, you see them on panels, a reference to the port and activities in the port, and they are standing free. You can touch them. It's not allowed, but you could touch them. But the experience is completely different when you compare it with the situation we had uh, six or seven years before. And this is another impression. This is about the team of life and death. It's a story tower, and on every level, we have one team, universal teams, about Antwerp in interchange with the world. In a way, we invite people to go to the mass, and we would like to behave him or her as Alice in Wonderland. You walk into the boulevard, free access, and we try to seduce her or him to go in to the galleries. But you are free. It's a very voluntary, feeling-giving museum. Three years before the opening, and this had, uh, there was a lot of courage needed to do that, uh, three years before the opening, we were a bit anxious about, well, who's the key to the future? Youngsters. If we do not invest in youngsters, the age of 15 and 24, if we do not invest in them, who is going to our theaters? Who is going to our movies? Movies, maybe. But who is going to our museums? Maybe nobody. So three years before the opening, we made the group of youngsters accomplished to the creation of the museum. And now we are in a situation that some of the youngsters are becoming curator for exhibitions, give ideas of how to deal with the collections. And another fascinating thing was, and that had to do with how to work with the building, the transforming of the building. It's a very flexible building. You can do almost everything with that. If it doesn't succeed as a museum, you can make apartments in that, but you can also make a dance hall style in this. And this is what happened with the youngsters. Every year, there's a Venetian bal masque, a Venetian dance party, and the youngsters can come in only when they have a mask. And everybody does that, 2,400 youngsters. And on every level, we have a VJ, a DJ, lounge bar. VJ, DJ, lounge bar. And the galleries are open. 2,400 youngsters inviting themselves to come over to the mask and experience this museum in a completely other kind of context. And Belgian spirit is good food. We have in the museum on the Strom, on the top level, 10th floor, we have a two-star Michelin restaurant run by Vicky Gernes of the uh, Silter. Total experience. Feeling, hearing, smelling, eating, all this can be done in the museum on the Strom. The panorama is a very popular place, and sometimes we get questions, can we do this, can we do that? One question, people who are looking professionally to start, they were fascinated about the fact that once in the 16 years, the planet of Venus is standing between the sun and the earth. Don't miss that. Take your telescope with you, go to the rooftop panorama, and enjoy it, because it takes such a long time before you can experience for the next time. Also, this museum is a place to do that kind of, of things. 
minor, but maybe, well, good thought and intelligent uh, intervenience is uh, on the rooftop. You can take photographs, but we made holes in the glass. So you can put your camera through that hole and have an excellent photograph. And on the other side, it's also possible to let the wind go through your hair, if you still have them, through your hair, and you can feel how the wind is going through your hairs. And then the mass is finished. It's there. And we invited people to come over there. The first five days, 65,000 people. It has taken 100 years, 100 years in Antwerp, to create and to build a new museum. So this is a feast you cannot miss, and you may not miss. You must see it, and you must come to Antwerp to find it out. Nice thing, I must dare. Yeah, we are very ingenious and innovative in finding slogans. But how did it work? For the 65,000 visitors that came to the opening of the mass, they received a button. And they were free and they were proud that they, were, went, that they went already to the mass. I, I must there. See it? You are a loser. You don't have that badge. You were not there yet. So hurry and go there. Firework, of course. Belgian, spirit, you heard it, beer. We are a country of beer. The best beer worldwide, apologize, but it is true, it's a Belgian beer. That's true. And if you go to Belgium and you drink a beer, you will have a carbon plate and we put that on that carbon plate. That's the way how we serve a pint of beer. Well, all the cafes, which are pubs in Antwerp, all the cafes that has those kind of carbon plates with the iconic red stone and with a hand. Remembering for every beer drinker, oh, I have to go to the mass too, or I was there already. And then the youngsters again, and I'd like to finish with this one. But sometimes we think about, well, the youngsters and they make fun and they have dance and that kind, they have problems with their girlfriend and that kind of things. But we had a team of youngsters and at the precise moment they came up with the idea, wouldn't it be interesting to make and it's their invention, a digital tour. Go online, on your computer, it doesn't matter where you are, in Hong Kong or Sao Paulo, go online, go to their website and discover the mass live. And these youngsters are standing there, and you can choose one, and he makes a tour for you. And then, this is what happened the four weeks after the opening, you could see standing people there, he has, she, in this case, she has an ear. Someone is online, queuing up, and she received messages. Oh, I would like to go to the fourth floor. Can you do that for me? Yes, of course, I'll go there. Like this. It takes two, two minutes, so we only have two minutes to do that. But this was an invention by a mass in younger hands, by a youngster of 17 years old, the ID. And we created it with your bureau with profits. It received so many awards. And it tells you that, well, you need to have that kind of new spirit, that new insights in your museum, and then it keeps you young. The Mars is one museum. The other museum is the Red Star Line that will open next year. Antwerp has a port. Three and a half million people mostly came from Eastern Europe to Antwerp, jumped onto boats, and went to Ellis Island. This is a story of three and a half million immigrants going to the United States. And this story we would like to tell in our neighbor museum. So we are always building new museums in Antwerp. And this is a story about people on the move to be seen next year. And if you come to Antwerp next year, we have two new museums, the Mass and the Red Star Line building. I began with um, the presentation with um, the video clip, it said, um, well, at the end you had a message in Flemish, it said, uh, well, now maybe you were at the mass and you discovered it, well, actually you ain't seen nothing yet. Well, this is the message I would like to give to you too. Actually, next year, when Belgium is partner, uh, partner cunt, uh, country partner, yeah? uh, here, what's concerning design, innovation, and all the elements that makes Belgium so exciting, well, I can only um,
tell you that you ain't seen nothing yet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Calderpal, for sharing um, your incredible efforts. Congratulations on your museum. Um, we have time for two questions mm -hmm. from the audience. Um, and I think what's incredible is the sensitivity of the way you bridge the museum to the city, to the port, to its history, and really as an open museum. Um, so in the context, I think, of Hong Kong, we're developing a big cultural district, and um, we've been um, observing a lot of discussions today and how to kind of bridge further into the sort of Asian-Chinese context. And I'm just wondering, you've been here for a few days, um, do you have any recommendations or critiques or comments from your own experience to our Hong Kong audience? Um, so far, I do not have any recommendations. It would uh, be, um, should I say, to be honest, too offensive to, uh, after having spent two days in this uh, wonderful city, to give recommendations. But maybe they come. But if there's one, and this is something we did with the mass, you always have to start from the audiences. Uh, when there's a need with audiences, where there's an insight with audiences to come up with a new museum, to tell new stories which are very close to your audiences, I think it can become a success. For example, Antwerp, 510,000 visitors, uh, inhabitants, sorry. But we have 170 nationalities living together. And what we try to do is to, uh, the larger Jewish community outside of Israel and New York is residing in Antwerp. The largest community of Jain people involved in diamond industry is living in Antwerp. And we, uh, if, if our baseline could be building communities, this is what the museum is. And I think that's, uh, it could be, well, it, I, I think to be honest, it could be the, the, the mission for every museum, building communities and make, it, uh, make them accomplished to the creation of what you do in your museum. Great, thank you. Um, we have time for two questions from the audience. Um, please raise your hand and we'll have the helpers give you a microphone. Anyone from the audience? All's crystal clear. Okay, one, one, I have a quick question. I heard um, your restaurant uh, received a Michelin star and uh, we obviously know food and culture um, can bring in new types of audience, um, but you have to still evolve in the future. What other strategies besides just exhibitions, um, nurturing the youth, um, are there other types of strategies you've learned over time to reach an even larger, say, mm. global audience? Yeah. Well, I think the major strategy we would like to do with this museum is to avoid that uh, people, when they go to the museum, they have something uh, in the idea of, um, well, I was here in March of 2012, then I can wait for the next two or three years, and then I come back. I was director, before that, I was director of the Rubens House, and uh, people told me, well, you have an easy job. People go to the Rubens House, and nothing is changing. So you open the doors at 9 in the morning, and you close it at 5 in the morning. And I tried to avoid that. I had to avoid that, because that's not really my mission to do that with kind of things with the museum. But uh, with the mass, for example, I think uh, we already made the decision that every, we have 470,000 objects in our collection. Maybe too much of it, but at least so much, every piece, in my point of view, is an actor. And I would like to put these actors on stage. And I, don't, I want to avoid that some of the actors are too long on the same stage. And I mean that uh, a traditional museum is a museum where you have no changings in this place. Well, this is not the case. Every year, and within a year, sometimes three, four times, we are changing this place, we are changing objects. So there's always a good reason to find yeah, to come over to the mass and discover what has been changing. Great. It's we, a combination yeah. between a museum and a Kunsthal. Yes. And a temporary Kunsthal. That, that's what we, I think that's the long term life of this museum. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Yeah. And let's, um, oh, someone's, well, Vivian, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a question. So it's about your uh, real time uh, museum tour. How about if there are several people look online at the same time and choose the same pretty girl for the tour? Will you group them together and make the tour? Because I think it would be fun to the have... First, yeah, the first in line makes a choice where she or he wants to go to. Yeah. And then when she drops off, the other one is queuing. So we have queuing. 
But they have to queue. Yeah. They cannot you join. To, yeah, they have to queue. Yeah. They cannot join together. Uh, you can, can they join make a group? Because I think it will add on a new dimension to museum yeah. tour. Because you yeah. really connect people together, yeah. even they are far apart, and then they can walk together. Although they don't hold their hand together, but they are <laughs> spiritually yeah. together. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you very much.